So mortgage rates actually break over the 7% barrier. It's the first time in over 20 years. We're going to talk Case Shiller and some hurricane stuff. Um, you know, not good news down in South Florida, unfortunately. So welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Randy Patrick here putting the realism back on real estate. Today is the 29th of September. The month is almost over. Of course, thoughts and prayers reaching out to people who are in southwest Florida, other parts of the state that got hit by the hurricane. Clearly, the area, which was, I guess, ground zero for the eye wall coming across, was basically uh, the sort of North Fort Myers, Cape Coral area, some of the barrier islands there, hitting North Port, Punta Gorda, etc. area. Um, you know, the Fort Myers Beach, I saw, you know, uh, little videos that, you know, was completely underwater, uh, so pictures of homes that... The water was almost to the roof level, stuff like that. So many people were affected by this. It's going to take a while for things to get cleaned up, for the water to recede and to see what the real damage is. It's going to be in the tens of billions of dollars. Um, we don't have any indication on loss of life yet, but unfortunately, we're pretty sure. That we've, I heard reports that uh, the sheriff down there in Lee County was saying he's assuming there's going to be quite a bit. Um, I think that... People, you know, we just can't, you can't estimate the power of a storm surge. I'm in the Tampa Bay area here. Uh, we fared well. We were on, again, above the hurricane, so we don't really get a storm surge. We got rain bands. We got wind. I was already out, you know, past couple of days preparing. Yesterday we had the wind and the rain, and today we're cleaning up outside for all the debris and stuff. But really, um, virtually nothing compared to what's happened in other parts of the state, especially southwest florida so uh people will need support people will need help so anything anybody can do uh you know donate figure stuff out help out etc uh, my oldest works for florida power and light i know in the sarasota area and he's actually out today they're you know doing their their um i guess you could say repair work etc um so there's tons of trees that are down on power lines the whole bit unfortunately here in the south when you get lots of rain it saturates the ground and the wind comes it knocks the big trees over and they take out the power line so the number one issue is going to be getting power restored as fast as possible to all the people in southwest florida and then taking inventory of the loss from that point in time so very unfortunate but again this is part of the of the business of living in florida especially living on the coast um does happen from time to time uh, as i said people fare well in these situations and others don't. It just depends on where the hurricane lands. So, again, thoughts and prayers with people down that area. Uh, the video is brought to you by our friends at foreclosure.com. If you want to check out what's going on, go to gethousingdata.com. That's gethousingdata.com. Sorry, guys, I've been outside all day <clears throat> cleaning up and a little horse here. Uh, but, again, the 30-year um, mortgage rate rose above 7% for the first time since 2000. This is the fastest surge in history. So if anybody really has any um, reservation or hesitation about where the housing market's going, what you know the Fed wants to do, what's going to happen, I mean, right away here, this is a good sign that you know rates are going to keep going up, which is going to make homes unaffordable for the majority of people out there, which means sellers are going to have to adjust if they want to sell and drop prices. So as the Fed said back in uh, June of this year, they want to reset the housing market. It appears that's exactly what they're doing. This is the highest uh, since December 11, 2000, so 20, almost 22 years, uh, if you think about that, uh, when we haven't seen rates like this for almost 22 years. Uh, also, this was the fastest 1% increase in mortgage rate history, more in mortgage rates in history. So, And the fact that it took place inside of a month is even more remarkable. So yes, we broke the six barrier a few weeks ago, then it broke the seven barrier this week. So. Can you believe that? So really, I think that um, this is going to happen a lot quicker than anticipated, and we're going to have a lot of carnage. But you know, it's it's again, it's that trying to get a hold of uh, you know inflation, trying to bring things in line, trying to bring price points in line, so the majority of people can enjoy the American dream and purchase a house. That's what's going on right now, and um, we're you know it's going to be tough for people along the way here. So. Um, <clears throat> We've also seen the fastest ever collapse in year-over-year -year case shiller prices. So um, we'll talk about that in a second too. I will get into, involved in the case, case shiller. Basically, the typical home now sells for less than asking price. So, you know, again, going from the first of the year, which I always mention, when everything was raw, 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 double-digit appreciation to where we are today, what a big change. You know, nobody could have seen this coming. 
and nobody wanted to come out and call it, if you recall. So um, basically, the Atlanta Fed a few weeks ago said the median, um, the, looks like it says the median American household would need to spend 44.5% of their income to afford payments on a median price home in the U.S., the highest percentage on record with data going back to 2006. Well, as of today, which is at a day in this article, that number is just over 50%. That's right, more than half of the average U.S. household's income goes to paying house payments, nearly double what this number was just two years ago. So, you know what, that to me is, you know, it's, as I said, it's obvious to everyone, um, you know, how else can the housing market, um, you know, how else can we go forward without the housing market crashing to bring it back down to reality? So, this is a cyclical event. Uh, we had a great run-up uh, before the last housing crisis. It came back down to reality, another run up again here, and we're just sort of back at that point where it's got to crash, it's got to crash, to sort of bring things back in line. So um, participate, if you may, in this. By the way, if you're not a subscriber, if you could please help my channel grow and hit the subscribe button, I really appreciate that. And if you think you're a subscriber, if you could actually resubscribe and hit that bell notification, because when I look at my statistics, I see a lot of subscribers dropping off for various reasons. So if you could do that again, I'd really appreciate that. Okay, so interesting enough here, um, just to, this just goes to show where the market is heading here. Uh, U.S. pending home sales tumbled to 11-year lows. And this is ahead of the recent rate spike. So basically, you know, like you know, all the all the groups out there, this is uh, the, the pending home sales um, index is produced by NAR, National Association of Realtors. And basically, uh, it said pending home sales fell 2% month over month which is more than the 1.5% month-over-month decline that was expected. So it fell greater, uh, pushing the index down 22.5% per, 22 year-over-year. So there's 22.5% less pending homes that are on the market um, or, or for sale or under contract, I guess you could say pending means under contract, uh, than there was a year ago. So <clears throat> that you can see how that graph looks. So, you know, it's, everything's getting pushed down here, worse and worse and worse. So what does that mean? That means less sales. That means if there are sales, um, we're moving towards a buyer's market now. So sellers are going to have to accommodate these high price points, these high interest rates and higher monthly payments. The previous slide just said, f on average, 50% of everyone's income goes to housing. Um, that's not a good number. That's far too high a number, which puts people at risk uh, for you know financial issues. And, and what happens when, that, when financial issues goes on, they typically end up stop paying their mortgage or something else happens. So, you know, it's it's not a good scene where we're at. I think, you know, how could I put it? Um, and I've said this before many times, it's not one thing that pushes the housing market over the edge. It's a, it's a, it's a combination or a culmination of a lot of things happening. We're seeing this now, 7% interest rates. Um, you, know, the, you know, we're seeing more and more of the income being, you know, more of your income going towards housing. Like at some point in time, it has to give, right? It has to give. People are going to go, I can't do it anymore. We're seeing that right now. It is actually taking effect. And as I said, I think this is going to be happening faster than anticipated, right? So obviously, um, the pending home sales index is contract signings. Uh, they, they decreased in three of the four regions while the West posted a small increase, similar to July's data. The direction of mortgage rates upward or downward is the prime mover for home buying, and, and decade high rates have deeply cut into contract signings. Only when inflation calms down will we see mortgage rates begin to steady. Pending home sales are often looked to as a leading indicator of existing home purchases for the future. Uh, uh, properties typically go under contract a month or two before they're sold. So this is this fell for the seventh straight month. This is the August number. So again, people are not interested in buying homes at high prices with high interest rates. It's kind of obvious and you know we have to change and the market has to change to accommodate that. Just for fun, and I, you know, I look at this as kind of tongue in cheek here. Searches for real estate market crash are the highest in internet history. So, an analysis of Google Trend data reveals that searches for real estate market crash exploded 284 percent in the United States as of September 2022, the highest level in Google Trends history. So, this goes to show that it's not a handful of people that think them. Housing market's going to crash, or things aren't going, you know, aren't increasing at where we, you know, where we want it to be. Uh, Double-digit appreciation and everything, rah rah, good, you know, everything is awesome. This is people. 
everyday people like you and me out there who are going maybe even not as interested in housing, but they're saying, okay, I've heard the housing market where we at, real estate market crash. So if that's like, you know, if that has exploded so as a, as a search, you know that um, people are getting nervous or are concerned about the housing market. They want to watch it change. Nobody wants to, as they say, catch the falling knife. And if you want to purchase, you want to purchase on the way down, not on the way up, obviously. So it just, again, I just thought it was kind of interesting to see that that, that was kind of a funny article that the searches are, are, you know, are coming out here. The analysis is by the Malibu real estate experts at Ruby Home. Uh, basically exploded within the past month. Unprecedented increase in Americans looking for information and prognostication about the real estate market. That's what I do. So I've been talking about a housing bubble and housing crash for quite some time now. So hopefully people will be finding me on this on this medium, right? So uh, clearly, um, <clears throat> and also the U.S. home prices continued their deceleration in July at their fastest rate in the history of the index. So again, even though we're talking the case Shiller, and I'll talk about it in one second, is a couple months in arrears, you can see that when it's going down, it's picking up. So here we are with case Shiller. All right, um, this is uh, two months in arrears. We're in September. It comes out the last Tuesday of September, so it came out earlier this week. Um, continued, so the index continued its deceleration in July. Uh, you can see that um, the um, uh, we got a 15.8% annual gain in July, down from 18.1% the previous month. So even though we're still gaining, we're seeing that slow down. Tampa, Miami, and Dallas reported the highest year-over-year gains in the 20 cities, and we'll take a look at that right now. So here again, just basically, um, <clears throat> July report reflects a forceful deceleration. So how can I be clear here? Everyone's talking about this. You've seen my previous videos. I talk about Fitch ratings and Moody's and Goldman Sachs, okay? They're all talking housing crash and correction. Now we're just trying to figure out the percentage of the loss. Now you've actually got, you know, we're talking Case Shiller here saying, yeah, we got a forceful deceleration, and we're seeing similar patterns in the other indices uh, across the board. Um, you know, as the Federal Reserve continues to move interest rates upward, mortgage financing has become more expensive, a process that continues to this day. Given the prospects for a more challenging macroeconomic environment, home prices may well continue to decelerate. Okay, so they know what's happening. They're just trying to say it in, the, in a nicer way. We know what's happening too. This should come as no surprise to anybody. Clearly, you know, that's been the graph over how many years here. The, the hump in the middle is the 2006 peak. You can see, go to the right-hand side of the graph where it sort of goes up exponentially. That's where we are in 2022. I'm going to zero in on this piece because you can't see. So at the very, very top of um, the graph there, and I had to blow it up so you can't really see it clearly, but what you can see where my errors are are these little hooks. So basically it's like, yeah, we went up to the top and then oop, there's the deceleration. So that's July. So it, it peaked and then it went down. It's a couple percentage points. So that's, you know, on the indices, you know, the, the national, I think the 20. Um, so and the other one too, you can't, you can't really see it very well. But the point is, yes, we have a, what they call forceful deceleration. It started. It started in July. All right, remember, Case Shiller is two months in arrears, so we're at the end of September. Here, going to run into October, and we still don't, and we won't have the data for August and September until two months down the road here. So, if we're seeing that happen in July, where we all knew things were slowing down, it's going to the trend's going to pick up quicker once these we can catch up on these months as time goes on with the Case Shiller indices. Now, again, just because it wasn't a huge, again, it's a two, you know two point three percent difference, but um, you can see that the um, the current from the peak. So the peak was what July 2006. So so the current peak from the previous peak is 66.5 percent um, greater than. So the, today's peak is greater than the previous peak by 66.5 percent. So we're not going to see that. That will start to slow down, and that will be a smaller number now. But listen, you bought your home, uh, you know, in the trough February 2012 or anywhere in that area. You've done pretty well. You've more than doubled your value or your money on your house. But, you know, we're going to start to see these numbers once they catch up um, change. So, again, uh, it's happening, guys. It, it really is right now. As much as mainstream media and the housing narrative might deny it or sort of keep us at bay, this is what's going on. Uh, the foreclosure stuff, you know, it, it's it's picking up here. We don't hear about that too much. If you see, watch my videos, you know I talk about the fact that if we have all these changes going on right now, just with 
inventory and sellers and buyers and interest rates and all these things are changing, um, what about the foreclosures that are coming or that are, that are manifesting now? So we're seeing all this deceleration and all these changes and all this potential um, you know, you know, volume and, and discussion as to how much we're going to lose now. No one's even factoring in the uh, the foreclosure volume that's going to hit, which will further kick us in, in the butt and push us down. Um, with regards to, uh, people had some questions, they've emailed me with regards to, you know, how do you react to the situation uh, with a hurricane and where you're going to find yourself? Well, this is actually where uh, the term forbearance is supposed to kind of work. So if you're in a natural disaster like this and you're in a situation where you're Either you, your house is damaged or uh, clearly if you have insurance, you're going to put in an insurance claim. Um, hopefully people have flood insurance, but I can tell you that there's always uh, flooding. If it's if it's huge, usually hits areas that, you know, have homes that with mortgages that aren't required to have flood insurance based on their location. So sometimes that you get caught in that respect. Uh, a lot of times the deductible for the flood component or the hurricane damage is a high deductible and people don't always have the, the money for that deductible. So it can cause some problems right now. So clearly the first thing to do is, you know, assess the damage. We'll obviously wait for the water to recede, assess the damage, get that insurance adjuster in there. Um, a lot of these homes will be foreclosure homes in the future because the numbers aren't going to work or the people are going to go, you know what? I'm just done. Like this is what happens in hurricanes. People just decide that they're just going to walk away, and um, you know let nature take its course. Let the home let it go to foreclosure. So we'll probably see a spike in foreclosures there. As I mentioned, this is where forbearance works for for um, homeowners. That when you have these natural disasters, you know you you can ask for a forbearance because of that, um, and hopefully they they should be able to give that to you. Realize that this is not a government. You know, forbearance moratorium, eviction moratorium, foreclosure moratorium situation. This is natural disaster, so you can get the forbearance plan on this. Uh, you will have to pay that back at some point in time, but it does give you, you know, at least up to six months or a year to figure things out and to kind of determine what you're going to do with your property. Um, you know, with the insurance and all that type of stuff. So those will be some big decisions for a lot of people. Um, I did notice on on the current foreclosure docket. So any foreclosures that were going on that were going to auction or foreclosure sale this week, a lot of them were canceled. So I saw some were canceled Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Most foreclosures that were going to auction in the past couple of days got canceled. Even for tomorrow Friday, we have cancellation. So people who were going to lose their homes to foreclosure. Get a little reprieve, uh, you know, in that respect. So there's still opportunity to help them if, if you want to jump on and connect with them. But that's kind of where we're at. So will we see more foreclosures? We will. Um, you know, the, this will be a little different. It's, it's 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 you know obviously disaster based foreclosure stuff. So hopefully there'll be more remedies for people. Uh, but uh, just having the experience and knowing how this plays out, there will be people who go, I'm not gonna, I don't have enough money because of the economy to pay that deductible. Typically a hurricane. Or flood deductible is a much higher deductible than your normal home home um, you know your normal home insurance claim. So I know what ours is. You know we would you know if I have a thousand dollar deductible, our hurricane damage deductible is like ten thousand. You see, so that's sort of usually how that kind of works. Is that it's, it's usually much more expensive because you know it's one of those you know how can I put it you know it's it's one of those one in a hundred one in five hundred year events type of thing. So uh, that's the way it kind of rolls off. So just keep in mind with that. Uh, once again, you know um, if you're I'll just touch on base on here. Looking for agents to join my firm in Florida. We can talk about this. I won't. I won't bore you guys. Whether you've seen it before. Um, same thing. I'm moving into my new foreclosure fortune product and training and opportunity. So connect with me for that. Uh, once again, I appreciate the views, likes, comments. Please share the video with your family and friends. All right. Uh, subscribe to our subscriber. Again, uh, just keep your uh, people in the southwest of Florida and other parts of the state that got really hit with flooding and other issues. Keeping your thoughts and prayers and. Do what you can to help those uh, that are going to be homeless and, and without places to live, etc. So anyway, everybody, take care. We'll talk to you guys next week.